Today we're going to take a look at our AP Racing by Essex products for recent Porsche GT cars. So throughout the video I'll generically refer to it as our GT3 kit uh, because the 991 GT3 was the first of these platforms that we developed these products for. Uh, so it fits the 991.1 and .2 GT3, the 991.2 and .3 GT3 RS, the 991 GT2 RS, the 981 GT4 and Boxster Spider, and the 718 GT4 and Boxster Spider. So all of the products in this video fit all of those applications, but I'll just be saying GT3 because that's what we originally did it for and that's how I think of it. So uh, we're going to take a look at our full menu of products for those cars. So that includes our two-piece uh, AP Racing J-Hook discs and that also includes our complete Radical brake systems which replace all of the brake components on those cars. So we're going to take a very in-depth look at those and we're going to compare the OEM components to our components and examine why and how our products are superior and perform better, they weigh less, and will give you longer life and hold more value than the stock parts. So uh, this is gonna be a long one, a lot of details, but I think it's important to go into that level of detail because these are a serious investment in the car and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. We're going to take a look now at the AP Racing by Essex Radical Competition Brake Kit. This is the full kit that includes both the calipers and the two-piece J-hook discs. The underlying technology in the complete system is the Radical caliper design. The Radical was introduced in the mid-2000s into professional motorsports, went on to win many championships in, in different series. Uh, one of them that's relevant to the 991 GT3 is the 911 RSR, ran the AP Racing Caliper to victory in, in Le Mans uh, a couple times. Uh, so this gives you an idea of what that product would look similar to. And this is the Radical that we supply for our uh, 991 GT3 kit. Uh, we have lots of details on the technology in the Radical, so check out our video, the AP Racing Radical story, or we have a blog post by the same name which goes into extreme detail on the Radical design philosophy, how it came to be, and how it has dominated in professional motorsports. Okay, now we're going to compare the OEM front caliper to our AP Racing Radical caliper. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is just how much bigger the stock caliper is. So when you look at them side by side, you can really see a huge difference uh, in overall length and packaging. Uh, the smaller, tighter packaging of the AP Racing Radical really gives you some nice advantages in terms of wheel fitment. Uh, I know a lot of people, particularly those with uh, PCCBs on the giant 410 millimeter discs, uh, they've had issues with rocks getting caught between the caliper and the wheel barrel. Um, part of that has to do with the uh, size of this bridge piece. Uh, you can look at that it's sort of a, a big rock catcher uh, as opposed to the bridge on the AP Radical. So you can see just how much tighter the packaging is on the Radical design. Uh, and that also, also leads to weight, uh, which we're going to look at next. So not only are the stock calipers a lot larger in terms of footprint and size, they're also a lot heavier. So let's put these on the scale and take a look. Uh, these OEM front calipers, six piston, typically weigh just a little bit over nine pounds, uh, which is what I'm, you should be seeing there on the scale. And then if we take our front AP Racing Radical, these weigh typically just over six pounds, 6.1 pounds. So that weight savings is, uh, you know, in the three pound unsprung range, pretty, pretty big. And then we take a look at the rears and the rears usually weigh on the GT3 somewhere in the seven and a half pound range. And the rear AP Racing Radical, typically in the 4.85 
range somewhere in that neighborhood. So again, several pounds uh, difference. So you're talking about three pounds of corner unsprung weight just on calipers alone. So pretty big difference right there. One of the big advantages of the AP Racing caliper over the stock caliper is the finish. So the stock caliper is a painted finish. And what happens with painted finishes on the racetrack is uh, destruction via several ways. Uh, one is sometimes they'll fade. A red caliper like this will fade to a dark maroon. Uh, sometimes if you get brake, brake fluid splashed on the caliper finish, it will actually cook onto the finish, turn black, blister. Uh, the paint will crack, it will fall off. Basically, painted calipers are not designed to run on the racetrack for years and be pounded on. Um, whereas the AP Racing caliper has an anodized, a hard anodized finish. Um, and what that means is, you know, if you get a little brake fluid on here and then you wipe it off, it's not gonna really do anything. And over time, you can heat cycle it a whole bunch of times and no matter how much you pound on it on the track, it's always gonna look about the same. It might have a little color shift, but nothing remotely close to what you'll see with a painted caliper. So overall, this finish is designed to go to the track to pound on it. Uh, it also looks cool. It matches with the wide range of uh, colors available on the GT3, you know, whether it's something that's even paint to sample. Um, this gives you a nice um, race look and it also holds up a lot better. So a lot of advantages for the anodized finish versus a paint. One of the greatest convenience benefits of our AP Racing brake kit is pad swaps. Uh, with a stock caliper, changing pads between a street pad and a track pad is no fun at all. Um, after you get past dealing with the center locks, wheels, uh, then you have to contend with removing the entire caliper, the stock caliper, from the car to change the pads because it has a fixed bridge. So a caliper with a fixed bridge means there's no access to move, remove the pads without going from the underside of the caliper. So uh, you would have to take these bolts, release those from the spindle, and take the entire caliper off the car. Um, some problems with that are that the factory spindle is aluminum, so you really don't want to be constantly threading and unthreading a bolt into a, a which is a relatively soft aluminum spindle. That's one problem. Um, some people try to get around that by installing caliper studs uh, into the factory spindle to use with the factory caliper. That's one solution, but then you've got another hurdle to overcome. The stock caliper comes with a hard brake uh, line coming into it. So you cannot remove the caliper without disconnecting the brake line. Uh, once you disconnect the brake line, then you're going to have to re-bleed the brakes before when you connect the caliper again. So um, a whole series of issues with just taking these calipers off to swap your pads. So for someone who goes to the track a lot and also drives the car on the street, it's a real challenge uh, swapping between the different types of pads. So it's a, it's a constant uh, hassle that you have to deal with. So um, we eliminate all of that with our system, uh, which I'm gonna show you now. So with our system, you don't have to remove the caliper to change the pads. So getting the wheel off is much harder than the pad change with our setup. So all you have to do is remove these bolts and you'll watch these fall. Um, once these bridge blocks come out, you can just easily drop your pads right in there. So um, huge time saver, huge convenience factor, particularly if you're tracking the car and also driving it on the street. Um, going back and forth between pads is far faster and easier than the stock setup and it's going to take you less time than it would to change your wheels uh, with the center locks so big convenience factor there um, and then what we also do is we have a flexible stainless steel brake line that replaces the hard line so that is one other issue you don't have to contend with anymore wanted to show you one other small feature that is relatively important uh, in terms of NVH 
Um, our kit includes these little pad tension blocks, which are optional on some of our lesser kits, but on our GT3 kit, we include these as standard. Um, these little tension blocks have a spring clip on them. So what that does when these are installed is that puts a little tension on the top of the brake pad back plate so it doesn't rattle around and make noise. So it really quiets them down quite a bit. Uh, also in the box, you'll find the standard bridge pieces without the pad tension if you ever needed a spare or wanted to use those for some reason. So I just wanted to make note of that so you're aware of it. Okay, let's take a look at the pads that the OEM calipers have and also the ones that the AP Racing calipers run. Um, the pad shape is for the AP caliper is an older design from many years ago. Um, and the beauty of that is that it's not a proprietary shape and every pad manufacturer makes these shapes. Uh, and the same goes for the rear. Um, you can get them in just about every flavor from every manufacturer, whether it's for road, or track, endurance racing, sprint racing, um, whatever pad you want, you can typically find it in this shape. So uh, we don't hold you hostage to a proprietary pad shape that you can't find in any compounds. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things about our AP Racing calipers. Huge range of available pads. Um, so if you look at them versus stock, you'll note that this pad is a little shorter and also uh, in length and also not quite as tall in height. Uh, it is a little thicker than the stock pad. Um, on Ren Re Renlist recently, one of our competitors leveled some criticism about this pad shape saying that that pad is so small, how could it uh, hold any heat and how does it not wear out? Uh, you know, real race calipers don't use a pad that small. Um, that is a completely false and ridiculous statement. Um, the NASCAR Cup caliper that I showed you earlier. This is the same exact pad shape that fits in that caliper. Um, so if you think the pad won't hold up on your car, be comforted in the fact that it holds up on a 3,000 pound, 1,000 horsepower uh, NASCAR cup car ripping around Watkins Glen. Um, so uh, completely unfounded criticism there on the pad size. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too whenever we look at the discs and I'll explain um, why the pads don't run hotter and why they have enough heat capacity to still not fade and last a long time. So as far as piston types go, you probably noticed when I held the AP up that these are very different than, than these pistons. So I pulled the, pulled the pistons out of another caliper to show some uh, example. So this is a stainless steel ventilated piston with a domed back and an anti-knockback spring attached to it. So um, I'll go through each of those features. The castellation or ventilation on the piston is designed so whenever it's against the back plate of the brake pad, it allows air to travel between those two surfaces. So air can get inside the piston and cool it off. Uh, that's a big advantage. Also, the material used, stainless steel, has a much slower transfer of heat than aluminum. So it takes longer for the heat to absorb into the piston and into the caliper body and into your brake fluid. So that's why we use stainless steel in racing. Also, sometimes we use titanium, but on this particular setup, we're, we're using stainless steel. Um, the piston also has a domed back. So it's hard to see on here, but if you look really closely, you can see it's sort of raised around here. And then on the inside, if you were to look in there, it's got curves. So a dome, add stiffness so rather than a flat back uh, and when we introduced that in pro racing the drivers noticed it immediately and said hey what you do to the to the car um, they could actually feel that stiffness and then uh, let's take a look at the stock setup now um, this is an uh, aluminum piston but it has a ceramic cap so what they were trying to do with the ceramic cap is similar to what we try to do with the stainless steel. 
um, the ceramic doesn't conduct heat as rapidly as the aluminum would. So uh, it's a good idea, but the implementation in this case has been problematic. And we've all seen the threads on red lists uh, where people have these piston noses or caps, they crack, they fall apart, they fracture. Um, that's very common on the GT3. So, um, and I don't believe they sell the cap itself individually. You have to buy the whole set of pistons for the caliper. Um, so that is a problem that we've seen all the time and we eradicate that problem with our stainless steel piston. Um, We'll get back to the spring. The spring is an anti-knockback spring. Uh, so knockback is when you go through a series of turns and imagine this is your disc and your disc is going back and forth like this as you go through the turn. And what it does is as it's doing that, it presses the pistons back into the bores. And if you don't have springs and your pistons get pressed back into the bore, when you go to jump on your brakes for the next stop, you have to make up that distance to reach the disc face again. So you hit the brakes and the pedal drops quite a bit until you make contact with the disc and then it feels normal. Uh, that is a scary situation if you've ever had it happen. Uh, I've had it on a couple cars I've driven on the track. Um, so the anti-knockback spring, when it gets pressed back into the bore, that little spring presses it back to be back close to the disc again. Um, and these are such a low force. Um, you're talking anywhere from four to seven pounds uh, of pressure on the spring. So it's not something where it's gonna push against the disc and wear the, you know, wear your pads out or wear the disc out or anything like, or cause any kind of binding. Um, it's just a very gentle push back into proper alignment. Um, a couple other things we'll look at are dust boots. So with the OEM setup, since it's designed to, to run in all weather, whether you want to be, you know, driving in the uh, desert or uh, in Arctic conditions, it has a dust boot on it. So what happens is when the piston extends, you can probably, I'll do it without the piston, it'll show, it'll be easier to see. When the piston extends out, this little dust boot around here keeps debris off the sides of the piston. Um, that's all it's for. Uh, there's always a lot of talk about, oh, the, you know, these calipers don't have dust boots. Um, you know, it's, you know, I'm gonna have to rebuild it all the time because of that. That's not the case at all. Um, as I showed, all that dust boot does is keep debris off the sides of the piston. So uh, if you don't have dust boots on your caliper, when they extend, before you push them back in for a pad change, all you do is wipe the sides of your caliper or your piston off before you retract them and you're accomplishing the same thing that the dust boot was accomplishing. Uh, the problem with dust boots is they do not hold up well to heat. When you take them on the racetrack, they get brittle, they get hard, they fall apart, they crack and they flake. And once they're compromised, they're completely useless. You just have these little pieces of tattered material hanging off your piston. So um, they're fairly use useless for anyone who's tracking their car uh, on, on a normal tarmac circuit. So while this caliper does not have dust boots, it does have high temperature internal seals. So if you look on these calipers, you'll see down here in the piston bore, that's where the piston seal is. Um, so the piston slides in and out of this seal and that seal keeps the fluid behind the piston. Um, as I said, these are high temperature, they're designed to heat cycle. So uh, again, people over the years have criticized racing components saying, oh, you know, they need to be rebuilt more than a road caliper, that sort of thing. That's, that doesn't make any sense. So these are designed to take heat and abuse uh, specifically for that purpose. So they'll take more heat cycles, remain pliable without cracking and falling apart than a seat piston seal in a road caliper. So you don't need to rebuild these nearly as much as you would a road caliper that's run on the track. Um, so built for extreme durability under high heat track conditions. One thing you may not have noticed when you were looking at the AP Racing Caliper is that all the fluid pathways are internal. So if you look at the stock caliper, you'll see what is called the crossover pipe or the crossover tube that takes the fluid 
that comes in on the inner half, comes across and comes to the outer half to supply pressure to the pistons. Um, what can happen with a setup like this is, as we talked about earlier, debris, rocks, uh, particularly on something with a really large disc like a PCCB setup, um, you're talking about the wheel barrel being very, very close to this crossover pipe. Uh, so this can get damaged, it can get pinched, it can get broken, and when that happens, you lose your fluid pressure. Um, so the AP caliper is designed with no external fluid pathways. It's all internal, so the fluid moves around through the caliper. Uh, another nice thing is that that helps protect the bleed screws. So the bleed screws are only on one side, in this case on the inner half, and those are better protected. So when you're changing your wheel and you put your wheel on, you don't have to worry about knocking that. So when you put your stock caliper on, your bleed, your bleed screws will be at the top, and you go to set your wheel on the car and you can knock it. This one has some protection for it here, but it's still in danger of being damaged uh, to a much greater extent than it is here. Um, so that's another feature of the AP Racing Caliper that are designed for protection, durability, um, and less maintenance long-term. Okay, when we take a look at the pistons in the calipers, I'm gonna show you something that might catch your attention. Um, if you look at the pistons in the stock caliper, they are all the same size. And if you look at the pistons in the AP Racing caliper, you can see that they are not the same size. They go from smaller to larger. The smaller pistons would be at the leading edge if the disc was spinning in this direction. And the larger would be on the trailing edge. Um, so your first thought might be, well, the piston sizes are different. Is that going to change the brake torque output or my brake bias? So if you take the average size of all the pistons, it very closely matches the average size of the stock pistons. So the brake torque isn't really impacted. It's only a, a very tiny amount. Um, so it's not going to have any negative impact on your brake bias or ABS or anything like that. Um, the reason for the different size pistons, uh, it's called differential piston bores, is to combat pad taper. So whenever you have a brake pad uh, that's this long and the disc is spinning in this direction, the leading edge tends to dig into the disc face more so than the trailing edge. Uh, it'll catch on the drill holes or slots on the disc and what happens is material is ripped off the front edge of the pad and travels back along to the trailing edge of the pad. And you get a buildup of material on the back end of the pad, and then it starts to build up like that. And so we have the larger piston at the top, uh, pressing with a little more pressure on the top to keep the pad flush and resist taper. Um, and then one of the other things we had talked about earlier was the OEM pad is also longer. So whenever you have a very long pad like this, it's actually more prone to that type of taper wear. So again, some great advantages with the uh, size of the pistons and how they're arrayed in the AP Racing Radical calipers. If we take a closer look at the rear calipers, you're gonna see a lot of the same features that we see on the front uh, relative to the stock caliper. So uh, the AP caliper has a smaller footprint it's more compact design. Uh, it has a removable bridge. This time it has a single bolt, which makes it even easier to remove the pad very quickly. Uh, whereas the factory caliper has the fixed uh, bridge that mandates you remove it in order to change the pads, which is a bit of a hassle. Uh, has an external crossover pipe versus the internal fluid pathways. Um, this one weighs several pounds more, has the painted finish, all the same features that we saw uh, differentiate the, the front calipers. Uh, this one also has the differential piston bores. Um, this rear caliper is actually really cool. They did an unbelievable job of removing all the weight out of it. I mean, you have gaps and you can see through the caliper uh, from many different angles. So all excess weight removed, cools tremendously well. 
ultra lightweight, extremely stiff, and very easy to change your pads. One of the really cool features that you get when you purchase an AP Racing by Essex Radical Competition Brake Kit is a lifetime recertification uh, process. So if you run your setup for a couple years and eventually you're hammering on it and you think it's time for a rebuild, um, or if you have any kind of um, indication that it's time for a rebuild, if you were to see fluid uh, leaking out around the pistons, that sort of thing, uh, you can send them back to Essex and we will pull them apart, clean them and repair them and recertify them and get them back to you. So you don't even have to get your hands dirty. So um, our techs will take them, uh, they will evaluate the caliper, they will pull the pistons out of the bores uh, they can replace the internal seals with some fresh ones uh, that won't leak. They'll check the pistons to make sure there's no damage to, to the pistons at all, either on the uh, ends of the pistons or the sides of the pistons once they're out. Uh, they'll make sure the springs are intact and working properly. Um, they take the caliper body and they put it in an ultrasonic cleaner to clean all the debris and gunk and accumulated uh, track marbles off of it. Um, basically, it comes back to you good as new. They also, after they completely reassemble it, we'll, we'll put it on a pressure bench and we do a series of pressure tests to make sure that it's functioning properly and holding pressure. So um, that's a really great feature uh, that really elim eliminates a lot of labor. Uh, the same techs we have working on your calipers are the same ones we use for all of our professional racing customers. So every year we have thousands of uh, professional level uh, calipers like the ones we talked about earlier coming through our facilities. The same techs that rebuild those are the ones rebuilding your calipers. So they've got a great trained eye to know what to look for, what needs fixed, what doesn't need fixed, and we can take care of all that for you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a comparison of the AP Racing J-Hook discs to the stock discs. So if you take a look at them, you can see that the AP Racing disc is a little bit larger in diameter than, than the stock iron disc. Uh, this one is a 394 by 34 millimeter, and this is a 380 by 34 millimeter. So we have a little bit bigger overall diameter. Uh, thickness is the same, um, but we'll take a little closer look at the construction of these two and show you some of the differences. Um, the OE disc, the iron disc, is called a dual cast disc. So it's technically two separate pieces. The hat is separate from the iron disc portion, and this is aluminum. Um, but they're cast together at the same time. So uh, even though it's two pieces, it's really sort of one piece. Um, and the idea here is, is that these small pins will allow the disc to expand as it heats. So when you take it out on the racetrack, it heats up and the disc slides out essentially on these little uh, mounting pins here. Um, so that introduces some float into it. Now the, the downside is that the float is not as great as it is as capable on a true two-piece design. Uh, and this design also, you can see if you look at this air gap, it, it sort of blocks off a lot of the air flowing into the uh, back side of the disc. Um, conversely, if we look at the AP Racing disc, this is quite a bit different. So you can see here the diameter difference uh, that I was mentioned. And you can also see that the mounting system uh, leaves a lot greater air gap on the back side. So, uh, what that allows is a lot more cooling air to flow into the back side of the disc and cool the disc down. If we take a little closer look at the mounting on the AP Racing disc, uh, it is what we call a float in disc setup. So on the iron disc ring, the channels that the hardware sit in are oblong, they aren't round. And so there's a small uh, bobbin, that, which is this piece, and that slides in the channel. So as the disc heats up and expands, the hat stays in place 
and the disc grows and that bobbin just slides in the channel and prevents distortion of the disc. So the disc remains true uh, inside the caliper. It doesn't warp or deform and it can slide. Then we have what we call a uh, AKB anti-knockback spring clip, which is this little piece that sticks out. And we have those on every other hardware stack. So that little spring keeps tension. So it helps prevent uh, pad knockback like we talked about with the calipers, but it also keeps NVH down. So it doesn't allow the whole assembly to rattle around or make noise. So it suppresses all those uh, rattling, that, any type of noise like that. Um, and again, you can see um, a lot of room for float on this setup, more so than on the stock setup. Let's take a look at the disc hats a little more closely. The disc hats are 6061 heat treated billet aluminum uh, with a hard anodized coating for durability. These tend to hold up extremely well to track abuse. Uh, you pour a lot of heat into them. Uh, they also don't seem to color shift uh, quite as quickly or readily as some of the other options we've seen on the market. Um, anodizing is an extremely durable surface finish. Uh, it can hold up to different, you know, if you get brake fluid on it, something like that, it's, it's very durable. Um, extremely lightweight, uh, considerably more so than the stock uh, setup. And on the back side, you can see we have scallop cutouts again for weight reduction. But what that also does is allow for airflow between the hat and the disc. So uh, you can see it. If you look here, the air is able to evacuate, comes in the back of the disc and flows out across the outer disc face. So uh, evens out the cooling a bit on the disc. And as I was mentioning, the float in disc uh, float mechanism really allows this hat to maintain its integrity for the life of the kit. Uh, we just don't have anyone wearing them out because the way this setup works is this attachment hardware goes through a round hole here. So it's not moving around or, or rubbing or wearing on this aluminum. Uh, the movement and the wear is on the iron. Um, so these typically don't need to be replaced. Um, I don't, only time they need to re be replaced is if somewhere were to crash or damage one for some reason. Uh, but just normal use and wear and tear, it's not something that you should really factor in to that you're gonna have to replace. So not really a cost consideration. Now we're gonna take a look at the disc weights. So on the scale now is the OEM rear disc. It has a very tiny bit of wear. This is from a local customer running our brake kit weighs in at 23.2 pounds. And again, that is a 380 millimeter disc by 30 millimeters. And if we take our SX 380 by 32 millimeter disc, comes in at just a hair over 19 pounds. So about four pounds per side of unsprung weight savings on the rear discs. And these out of the way. If we take a look at the fronts, this is the 380 by 34 millimeter stock disc, which weighs in at about 24 pounds, versus the AP Racing 394 by 34 millimeter disc, which weighs in at about 21.4 pounds. So close to three pounds lighter despite being larger in diameter by a considerable amount. So uh, you can see the benefits of the uh, true two-piece construction there on weight. Also the um, other features, the internal vein design, everything adds up to a lighter uh, disc that flows more air. If we take a look at the internal vein structure of the two discs, it's pretty obvious that the AP disc has considerably more veins. This is the front and this is an 84 vein disc and the stock has 60 internal veins, half of which are split and half of which are complete veins that go all the way through. Um, the benefits of the high vein count, this disc flows a ridiculous amount of air uh, and 
Also, having a lot of internal veins provides a strong lattice work behind the disc face. So what that means is there's less deformation as the disc heats up and, and grows and expands. It doesn't distort as much and it keeps the pad running true to the disc face, which means an even distribution of heat around the entire disc face, even pad deposits. So you aren't getting a lot of pad deposit judder. Um, if you look at the internal veins more closely, you can see that they're directional. So let me pull these out of the way. The veins aren't just a straight vein, they're a directional vein, so the discs are handed left side and right side, and what that means is that the discs act sort of like a propeller. As the disc spins, the air is pumped through those veins and evacuates very quickly, so you're constantly moving a lot of air through the disc, which drops the overall temperatures down, reduces your disc wear, your pad wear, the stress on your brake fluid. So a lot of different benefits of that directional vein structure and the high vein count versus the stock discs. If we take a look at the face of the disc, you'll see a difference in the appearance. The factory discs come with drill holes. So the idea there is not just to look pretty, which it does look pretty cool. The idea is to create leading edges for the pads to bite into. So all these little edges on the holes are somewhere whenever the brake pad is squeezing, it can grab onto those edges and that gives you superior pad bite. Um, we go about solving the pad bite issue in a little different way. Uh, instead of drill holes, we have the patented J-hook. So the J-hook design, some people call it a fish hook um, for obvious reasons. Uh, the idea there is to provide lots of leading edges for the pads to bite into, just like the drill holes. The big difference is these perforations in the disc face don't go all the way through the face. So when you see a drill disc that has been run heavily on the track, you're going to see lots of cracking around the holes on that disc. And you know, people say, oh, well the, the holes were cast into it, so it doesn't crack as much. That's not really the case. Anytime you see a drill disc that has been on the racetrack a lot, it's gonna crack, have cracks around the drill holes. Uh, on the J-hook discs, you get the benefits of the leading edges, lots of leading edges, but without the cracking. Uh, so you don't see a lot of cracks around the J-hook specifically. Um, the other big thing with the J-hooks is to distribute the heat evenly throughout the disc. So this pattern is designed to spread the heat evenly all around the entire disc face. So on a uh, traditional slot where you just have a single straight slot, you know, six or seven of those around the discs, in between those slots, the disc is going to be run at a different, running at a different temperature than where those slots are. And how that, what we see then is that the pad material is not necessarily sticking to the disc in an even manner. You might sometimes get hot spots and, and the disc will stick in one, or the pad will stick in one spot, not in another, and that creates vibration or judder. So the goal here again is to provide lots of leading edges for the pad to bite into while also distributing heat evenly throughout the entire disc face. Another important point of differentiation between the AP Racing J-hook discs versus the factory discs is the actual metallurgy that's used for the iron. So AP Racing has been at the top of the motorsports game uh, for 50 plus years and have won countless championships. Uh, the discs that you receive in your kit are in every way identical to those uh, in those series. So you can be confident that this iron is as durable as you can get in today's market. Uh, it's gonna last a long time, it's gonna hold up to anything you throw at it, and it's gonna give you a lot more longevity than what the stock iron is, which is really just developed for a price point, right? They're looking for a low cost um, solution, and you'll see the differences after you beat on them on the track for a while. One of the things you notice when you pull the discs out of the box is that they don't look brand new. No, you didn't receive a kit that someone else used already. Uh, the reason is we pre-burnish all discs for our 991 GT3 kits. Uh, so if you look at these two discs, you'll see the difference. This is a raw, unburnished disc, and this is one that went through our patented burnishing procedure. We actually have a patent on both the machine 
and the procedure itself. It's um, all computer controlled and it does a lot more consistent job than you can do on the highway or at the racetrack. Um, so we burnish that many thousands of discs every year for professional race teams. And the purpose of that is to prepare the disc for heavy use so you don't have to. Um, they go on the machine, they're run under a certain set of pressure and temperature conditions. Uh, and what happens is the pad material is transferred to the disc face in a perfectly even manner. Uh, it's just not something you can replicate on your own trying to do it yourself. Uh, it, it, uh, the goal is to prepare the disc for heavy use. It heat cycles them, uh, makes it a little more crack resistant, and also lays down that pad material in a uniform manner so you don't have any kind of judder or vibration issues. So uh, that's something, again, we can include as standard in all of our 991 GT3 kits on the front and rear discs. So you can pull them out, and then all you wanna do is, when you first drive the car, um, do a few hard stops on your pads to get them the specific pad seated to these discs and you'll be ready to go. So take them out on the racetrack and have at it. One of the best aspects of our discs are the price. So OEM front discs cost about $650 to $675 each and our replacement iron discs cost about $600 each at the time of this video. And then replacement hardware is $30 for the set for the disc. So we are actually cheaper than the OEM discs despite being considerably more durable, uh, running, more, running cooler, and uh, lasting a whole lot longer than the stock. So uh, tremendous value here. Um, in terms of your overall long-term running costs should be much lower on our setup versus stock. Now we're gonna take a look at the caliper mounting bracket. So for this GT3 application, we actually use a steel bracket, which is a bit out of the or ordinary for us. Typically we use uh, anodized aluminum, but in this case we used zinc coated steel. The reason being we needed to make the bracket extremely thin uh, to achieve our packaging goals. So uh, we obviously weight relieved it, um, took a lot, as much weight out of this as we can. This is, I believe, under a pound. Uh, and then we have these custom ARP studs installed. So uh, as we talked about when looking at the calipers, uh, with the factory setup, you have to constantly be pulling a bolt in and out of a soft aluminum uh, suspension upright. With this setup, you bolt it to the suspension on these points, and then even though you don't have to take the caliper off for a pad change with our setup, if you do uh, need to remove your discs whenever they need replacing, the caliper just slides on very easily on and off. So it just nests on the bracket and um, makes removal for disc changes extremely easy. Our front and rear kit comes with a set of Spiegler stainless steel brake lines. Uh, these are extremely high quality brake lines unlike anything else you'll see on the market. Uh, we have some excellent Porsche specific fittings that look just like the factory ones. These are all stainless steel so they're not soft uh, like some of the butter uh, metal fittings you see that will um, have threads tear out that sort of thing. These are extremely stout high quality. The fittings are sourced from Switzerland and the lines themselves are manufactured in Ohio. And every piece that comes out of the Spiegler factory is bench tested. Um, so you can be sure that the quality is extremely high. Uh, these are DOT compliant. You can see here, little DOT label, um, Teflon inner lining, and then they have this clear abrasion resistant lining on the outside. And what that helps prevent is getting the line snagged or caught in, on anything. And also it prevents uh, wearing through. If you were to make contact with something, it would give you a little more protection against that. Um, you would see it marked here before it actually even got to the stainless steel braid. So um, extremely convenient because as I mentioned when discussing the calipers, we replace the hard line that goes into the factory caliper. So when you do need to replace your discs, you can just take our caliper off the mounting bracket, hang it off to the side, change your discs, and this flexible line allows for that. 
Um, that's gonna save a lot of hassle. It's gonna save you from disconnecting the hydraulic line and having to bleed the brakes whenever you do a disc swap. So if you're paying someone to do that, it's gonna save you money there. Um, one other really cool feature on these lines that is unique and unlike anything else on the market is that these fittings actually rotate. So these lines come with a small tool and we'll show you a little graphic on that or how that works. But um, you put this tool, little block on here and these can actually rotate at the fitting. So when you do a brake line install, if you've ever done it before, a lot of times you're trying to tighten down the line to the caliper and you're cranking on it. Uh, and what happens is you introduce a lot of tension on the line and the line ends up twisted. Um, this allows you to simply rotate the fitting to reduce that tension on the line, which is a really great feature and uh, extremely unique to Spiegler. Um, so every kit includes both a front and rear set of the Spiegler stainless steel lines. One of the great things about our complete Radical brake system is wheel fitment. So because of the tighter packaging of the caliper, despite using a larger 394 millimeter disc versus stock, we can still fit inside the stock wheel without any type of wheel spacer. We also fit a wide variety of aftermarket wheels. Some of the common ones would be apex wheels or more commonly even than that would be forge lines. So a uh, lot of great wheel fitment options um, due to the tight packaging on the system. So when you're on the product page for the brake kit, if you scroll down just a little bit below the add to cart button, you'll see some tabs across the screen and one of them will say wheel fitment and installation. Just click on that tab and it will take you to some downloadable wheel fitment templates. So you download them, you print them out, check them with the ruler, make sure they're printed to scale because a lot of uh, printers oftentimes will resize them. Then you just stick them inside the wheel you're considering or you send them to the wheel manufacturer you're consider considering and then you'll know for certain whether our brake system will fit inside those wheels. So very easy to do and it ensures that you don't make any mistakes with your wheel purchases. A common question we get is how hard is it to install your brake system and the answer is not very hard at all. Uh, most people can install this with tools they already have in their garage. There's no major modification required to put it on the car. Uh, everything bolts right on and bolts right off. So if you run it for a couple of years, you can pull it off and there's really no trace of it left behind. So a uh, piece of cake and we also include extremely detailed installation instructions. Um, we're very proud of those. We put a lot of work into those to make sure that they have pictures of your actual car, uh, not a generic uh, one pager in a foreign language, uh, very detailed lots of nice pictures makes it very simple to install you can find our installation instructions on the same tab as you did the wheel fitment template so uh, download those take a peek see what's involved and i think you'll agree that they're uh, it's very straightforward one of the greatest things about our complete radical competition brake kit is that it is truly an investment that you can have a lot of value in for a long time. So when you purchase our system, you'll be able to take your OEM components off the car and stick them on a shelf in your garage and you won't have to worry about them getting destroyed. Um, you know, when someone goes to buy a used GT3, uh, one of the things they're gonna be looking at is how was the car used, uh, particularly if the car is equipped with uh, Porsche composite ceramic brakes uh, they're really going to take notice of the condition of those brakes because replacing them with a fresh set is about $30,000. So uh, with our system, you'll be able to purchase the kit, run it for a few seasons until you decide to you know, upgrade to the newer GT3 model. Um, you'll be able to enjoy all the benefits during that time. And then when it comes time to sell it, you just pull it off. It will leave no trace on the car you'll be able to sell it on the used market for about 65 or 70 percent of what you paid for it which is what we always see them going for on the used market and you get you know quite a few thousand dollars coming back to you when you go to sell your uh, current gt3 uh, conversely if you trash your oem brake components uh, particularly your calipers during your ownership of the car 
when it comes time to sell the car, you're going to probably have to freshen up the brakes. So you're going to be spending thousands of dollars to purchase more OEM brake components only to put them on the car and then hand it over to a new owner. So uh, when you do the math, it really makes a lot of sense. Um, we know our GT3 customers are especially familiar with investments. So we believe our system is truly that, an investment. When you have a problem with your brake system, you want answers and you want them now. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. Uh, technical support is one of our strengths. And when you call up Essex during business hours, you get a human being on the phone. There's no sitting on hold music, uh, chasing people, trying to get answers. Uh, you're gonna actually get in touch with someone who can answer questions very quickly. And this is something that's often overlooked. Um, people go into this, they buy a product, and then they're never, never able to resolve any issues that come up with the product if they do have any. So uh, you can buy with confidence and you'll know that we support our aftermarket customers with the same uh, staff and the same intensity that we would our professional racing customers like we've been doing for decades. Okay, we took an extensive look at the AP Racing by Essex Radical Competition Brake Kit. I wanted to be sure to mention one other product line that we offer, and that is our two-piece AP Racing J-Hook replacement discs. These are essentially identical to what we offer in our complete brake kit, except they're in the exact same dimension as the OEM discs. So uh, we offer them in the front and rear 380 millimeter size if your car was equipped with iron brakes from the factory or we offer them in the larger PCCB sizes in iron if that's what your car came with from the factory. So again, all the same features, the uh, true two-piece uh, floating construction, the aluminum hat, the weight savings. Uh, we save a couple pounds on the front and about four pounds on each rear. Um, the J-hook design, the high internal vein count, the open back to allow air to flow, the durable metallurgy, uh, all the same features that we have in the complete brake kits we have in this product line. So uh, if you aren't quite ready to make the investment in the full system or don't plan to, then the two-piece discs are a great option for you. Uh, again, they'll replace your OEM discs and work with your stock calipers without any other modifications to the car. Hopefully after watching that, you realize that we really did address every minute detail of the OEM brake system and improved upon it in some way. Uh, whether it was the convenience benefits, making it easier to work on, making it more durable under the track temperatures, making it fit inside more wheels, uh, making it cheaper to work on over time and a, a lower cost proposition. The list goes on and on and on. And we really did spend a lot of time uh, ironing out the details on this one. So uh, please let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this, if you found it helpful, and if you do have any more additional questions, always feel free to reach out to us via email, chat, um, phone, however you'd like to talk to us. We'll be here waiting to talk with you. We now have hundreds of Porsche GT car owners out of the track every weekend enjoying our brake systems, and it's been really fun getting to know them. We keep getting feedback from them, pictures, videos, telling us about the personal best lap times they set, the time trial victory they had, and we really would love to thank them for their continuous support of our products and our business. Now we're going to share some of those images and feedback with you so you can get some context about what exactly our product can do for you and also let you see firsthand what our brake system will look like behind the wheels on your car. Um, would also urge you to check out our Essex blog at EssexParts.com for even more detailed stories, feedback, pictures, and images about these cars. Thank you very much for your support. We hope you enjoyed the video, and please be sure to subscribe and like our videos and channel.